suppose the most significant thing in the area you've worked is that the range of colour varieties in parrots now is beyond breathtaking. It just beggars belief. And it's getting greater and greater every day. We've got to the point now where there's so many different mutations in, diff in so many different species. I think I've documented about 400 different primary mutations in over 80 different species of parrots. And, and so we've got enough numbers there that we can start to put together a broad picture across parrot species. So does, and this is the big thing you've done. You've looked at the patterns there and found that sometimes radically different looks in different varieties of parrots are the same gene, the same mutation. The, the secret is looking at or trying to uh, work out what the genes are actually doing, what they're changing. Now, you've got a couple of examples there of birds that are different species but identical mutation. Now, the first thing, everybody at home's looking at this and they're saying, Terry is an idiot. You've got one bird there that's sort of black and pink and the other one that's predominantly yellow with a bit of sort of turquoise, a bit of red and maybe a bit of black. They can't be the same bird. No. But to, to realise why they're different, you only have to look at the normal birds. The, 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 the bird parrot um, is a brown bird to begin with and, and the red rump is a green bird to begin with. So there's no way the same mutation is going to end up looking the same in the two different species. But that is the same mutation of two wild species of Australian parrots. And look at the difference. I suppose the thing that most people, their heart would sink when they hear the word genetics. Of all the great developments that humanity has ever done, genetics is the worst taught. It's badly understood because it's badly taught. Can anybody understand your book? I hope so. <laughs> the majority of the book I, I actually uh, made sure was as basic as I could make it. But even if you don't understand it, you can still make use of, use of it. In other words, this chart saying if you mate the white one to the blue one, you get... This is what you get. So many grey, so many this, da 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 And also the, the, the breeder can look at the book and say, well, I want to produce this colour. And I go through the process on what birds appear together to end up with that outcome. And genetics is one of the biggest growing sciences on Earth. A kid who masters some of these parrots would absolutely eat a genetics course at uni. Oh, it, even now... Um, geneticists at universities are still going back to basic birds like budgerigars and zebra finches to start learning their foundations uh, of their genetics and um, you know, as they learn that then they can they start to go into the, the fields of um, DNA sequencing and as you say it's a it's a growing area um, as we learn more and more and we we do a lot more with the birds. Don, the, the, the thing that really grabs people with breeding mutations is the thing that really excites them is that no matter how much we, we plan our matings and, and have the desire to, to breed a particular colour, that when you open your nest box you just don't know what you're going to get in your The lucky dip. Until they start feathering up. So that too is part of the lucky dip. Part of the lucky dip, but yeah. part of the fun. Yeah.